What's going on besties? Nurse Chung here. If you've ever wondered about that rhythmic thumping that you feel in your chest, you're in the right place. We're going to be taking a deep dive into that vital and fascinating organ of ours and my personal favorite, the heart. Let's get started. So let's kick things off by locating where this powerful organ actually sits within our body, grasping its basic structure. And trust me, it's not just a Valentine's Day icon, there's so much more to it. So let's talk about its weight and its size. If you've ever held an apple on your hand, you're pretty much holding the approximate weight and size of the average human heart. It's also been closely related to having two chicken breasts as well. We're talking about roughly 10 ounces in men and a slightly a little bit less in women. Now, where does the heart actually lie? So if you picture the chest, the heart isn't exactly on the left side as we're led to believe. It's really nestled between both of our lungs, slightly tilted to the left. Its central compartment within that thoracic cavity is what we call the mediastinum. So if you take a look here, that little red line that encompasses the heart here, that is actually our mediastinum, which is the cavity in which our heart sits. Next, we have our apex and our base. So when we talk about the heart, there's two terms that usually come to mind that you need to know. That's your apex and your base. So why are they important? Well, your apex sits down here at the bottom. It's located in that pointed inferior portion of the heart, and it's directly downwards and forwards to the left, nestling itself just right above the diaphragm. So why is this significant? Well, this is what we call our pulse point. The apex is where that apical pulse can be palpated. So medical professionals often list to the apical pulse in order to gauge what that patient's heart rate and rhythm is, especially in children. So when we're trying to assess specific heart conditions, this is usually where we are listening to that. It should sound something like this. That is that love dub, love dub that you hear within your heart. Next, we have the base of our heart. So contrary to popular belief, the term base might suggest that it's at the bottom right. In this case, it's actually at the top. The top of our heart right here is actually where the base is. It's positioned roughly opposite of the apex and it is directed upwards, backwards and to the right, lying beneath that second rib adjoining the major blood vessels like our aorta, which is right here in the red, and our pulmonary trunk, which comes off a little bit here, that is our blue. So what is significant about this? Well, it's about our vessel connection. That base houses the or organs, I'm sorry, the origins of our major vessels, including the superior and inferior vena cava, our pulmonary arteries, as well as our pulmonary veins. So really it's essentially the heart's main hub for incoming and our outgoing traffic. Next, we have our atria and our ventricles. These are very important. These are the chambers of our heart. The heart's kind of like a grand mansion when it comes to our four main rooms. So we have two smaller rooms, two smaller chambers that are located up at the top. If you take a look over here, we got one here and we got one a little bit further down. That is our atria. So the right atria receives deoxygenated blood from the body while the left atria gets that oxygen rich blood back from our lungs. Then we have our ventricles. They sit right below. So we have a ventricle here, and then on the other side we have a little ventricle here. These are our much larger chambers. The right ventricle actually pumps that deoxygenated blood that we receive back from the body to our lung. And the left side being the strongest, it also tends to be the largest uh, ventricle within our heart because it has to pump all of that oxygen rich blood out to the body. So think about it, think about the pressure that's happening down here in our ventricles, right? So that left ventricle is having to push against that systemic circulation of our body, whereas the right ventricle is just pushing it out to the lungs, right? That's not a high pressure system. So it's gonna be a little bit smaller. Our right is gonna be a little bit smaller and our left is gonna be much bigger. Look at the muscle around that. And of course, we've been talking about all of our highway systems. We have the arteries and we have the veins. So our arteries are right here in the red and our veins are right here in the blue. And we just use that as just a kind of way to remember that our arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart and blue carries our deoxygenated blood back to the heart from the body. So veins bring blood back to the heart, artery brings it away. So an easier way to remember that is A stands for away, right? 
A arteries carries the blood away. It comes down here to the arteriole. It goes into the capillaries where it does its oxygen exchange there. It takes it back to the venule, which is where our deoxygenated blood starts to get back to the vein. And then once it gets back in the vein, it returns to the body. Now, What's interesting about this is this is not always true. We don't always have arteries that carry oxygenated blood away and we don't always have veins that carry deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Let's talk about when this is not true. So we're gonna start up here with our pulmonary artery and here's the twist. It's one of the rare arteries in the body that carries deoxygenated blood. Yes, you heard that correctly. After the body has used up all of the oxygen from the blood, this deoxygenated blood returns to the heart and is collected in the right atrium. From there, it moves down into our right ventricle and then it is pumped into our pulmonary artery. Remember, arteries carry blood away from the heart. The pulmonary artery is what's going to transport that oxygen deprived blood to the lungs, right? So we have a lung here. We have a lung over here. That is where that deoxygenated blood is going to go. So this is our little carrier truck that's going to take it to our lungs and we're going to pick up that fresh oxygen. Now we have the pulmonary veins, right? So that's what's carrying the blood back to the heart. Well, with the pulmonary veins, contrary to popular belief, this is where oxygenated blood comes back to our heart. So after a delivery truck, our pulmonary artery drops off that deoxygenated blood to the lungs, it picks up that fresh oxygen, that newly oxygenated blood gets back to the heart, and our pulmonary vein comes into play. If you're looking for a more deeper dive into everything that we're talking about today and in future lessons when it comes to the cardiovascular system, I highly recommend that you head over to nursechungstore.com where there's additional study resources and everything that you're gonna need to know in order to pass those ANP exams. Now that we've got a grip on the heart's overall structure, let's talk about what it's actually designed to do. So at its core, that heart is a masterful pump, right? It's working tirelessly to circulate all that blood throughout the body. And it does this through two distinct ways. We have the pulmonary circuit, which is our lungs, and we have the systemic circuit, which is our entire body. So let's break each one of these down. So our pulmonary circuit is our low pressure system. This system is going to focus on sending blood to the lungs. It doesn't really have to work as hard in regards to the distance in order for it to get to where it needs to go, right? We have our lungs and we have our heart. There's not a whole lot of distance between the two. So really, what are the benefits of having this lower pressure system? Well, it's gentler, right? It's a much more delicate approach. You know, we don't wanna have a high pressure blast of blood because if we do that, it can ultimately damage those little tiny air sacs or the oxygen and that carbon dioxide exchange takes place. So by operating under this lower pressure system, the pulmonary circuit ensures the safety and efficiency of that exchange within those uh, pulmonary capillaries surrounding the alveoli. And when it comes to the pulmonary capillaries, once it's in the lungs, the blood travels through those tiny vessels. We get down into those little alveoli and that's where that oxygenation takes place. It diffuses into the blood. It allows that carbon dioxide to come out that it picked up through the systemic circulation. And it's gonna allow that oxygen to come down into that hemoglobin in order to be transferred back throughout the body. Now we have our systemic circuit. So this one is a high pressure system. Unlike our pulmonary circuit, this one has a lot more that it has to push against, right? Our body is vast. If you think about it, lungs, heart, doesn't have to go very far. Heart, body, there's a lot more, there's a lot more uh, surface area that it needs to get to. So the systemic circuit must push through a vast network of arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins in order to get where it needs to go. It needs to get to what? Our cells, it needs to get to our tissues, and our organs in order to properly oxygenate them so that they can do what they need to do in the body. So our body has made adaptions for this higher pressure system. The walls of our left ventricle, we talked about this a little bit before, are much thicker than those of our right ventricle, right? Because they need a lot more power to exert that force to get it out into our systemic circulation. This oxygen rich blood is propelled into the aorta and then throughout that extensive arterial system 
and that high pressure ensures that efficient delivery even to the areas that are against gravity or further from the heart takes place. So think about it, our toes and our brain are the furthest from our heart. It's gonna take a lot of pressure to get it to where it needs to go. So our heart, aside from being that masterful pump, as we discussed before, has a hand in other things as well, including critical pathophysiology processes. And we call that homeostasis. So what is homeostasis? It's the body's way of keeping an internal environment stable, ensuring optimal conditions for the cells to function. And it also helps with things like temperature regulation, maintaining pH, and it's really at the core of our survival. So what is the heart's role when it comes to homeostasis well first we have temperature regulation the body carries heat right the blood carries heat and the heart ensures that the heat is distributed evenly throughout the body so when you're cold think about it blood vessels in the skin are going to constrict in order to retain that warmth it's a process that the body supports by adjusting its output on the contrary when we're hot and we're trying to get that heat out the vessels are going to dilate and that's going to promote heat loss and the heart might increase its rate in order to assist with that dissipating heat but ultimately we're going to see those blood vessels really start to dilate to let some of that heat out to maintain that homeostasis inside of our body we also have oxygen and nutrient delivery every cell needs a constant supply of oxygen and nutrients. The heart ensures that this pumping oxygenated blood as well as nutrients to the cells takes place. And it's also gonna help removing waste so that way we can have that vital balance with inside our cell functions leading to again that homeostasis. We also have pH balance. This is really nifty, right? So the heart in conjunctions with the lungs actually plays a role in maintaining the body's pH. We call this acid base balance. So by adjusting blood flow to the lungs, the heart can influence the rate of carbon dioxide removal, is, which is a key component of that acid-base balance, right? So if we have too much carbon dioxide in our body. What is the body going to do? We're going to breathe it off. <sighs> We're going to get that carbon dioxide out. However, if maybe we're having anxiety and we're hyperventilating because we have a nursing test coming up, right? Then maybe we are breathing too much off. And what the body's gonna do is it's gonna try to slow down the breathing so that we can maintain and retain some of that carbon dioxide. And then lastly, we have fluid balance. So together with the kidneys, the heart plays a role in maintaining fluid balance. We also are gonna discuss hormones like atrial nitritic peptide, AMP, which is released by the heart to help regulate that blood volume and that pressure. It's going to be pivotal when it comes to homeostasis inside the body. So let's talk about a topic that everybody's familiar with, and that is blood pressure. So blood pressure actually measures the force exerted by the blood on the vessel walls. It's critical when we're delivering oxygen, nutrients, and removing waste. So how do we determine our blood pressure? We do it by three things. We have our stroke volume, our heart rate, and our vessel tone. So one key determinant of blood pressure is our stroke volume. This is the amount of blood that is being pumped out by the heart's left ventricle with each beat. If the blood pressure increases, you might also see an increase in our stroke volume. Next, we have the heart rate, right? So this is another big factor. This is the number of beats per minute. So an increased heart rate, that means more blood's getting pumped out to the body. We have this increase in heart rate. We're going to see an elevation most likely in our blood pressure. And then lastly, we have vessel tone. So the heart works in tandem with our blood vessels. When the vessels constrict, that's a process that we call vasoconstriction, resistance is, resistance is going to increase leading to a higher blood pressure. So the heart can influence this by releasing certain substances or by influencing other organs like our kidneys, which play a role in our fluid balance as well as blood pressure regulation in order to affect our vasal tone. So Overall, if we're seeing changes in blood pressure, these are the three things that we're gonna to wanna to take into account to see what we can fix in order to bring that blood pressure down when we're taking care of these patients. And lastly, we have atrial nitritic 
peptide, also known as ANP. So ANP is a hormone that's integral when it comes to fluid, sodium, as well as blood pressure homeostasis. So what is happening within the heart in order for this to be released? Well, there's gonna be some kind of trigger that takes place. When the atrial chambers stretch due to that increase of blood volume, you're going to see this increase um, release of ANP. This could be due to a number of factors. Maybe there's like an excessive salt intake within our patients. So if we have a lot of excessive salt intake, we're going to see a lot of water retention as well as increased blood volume, which is going to lead to that atrial stress. We also have kidney regulation. So once you know we're in the bloodstream, AMP is going to head to our kidneys, right? It's going to tell our kidneys, we got too much water, we need to get it out. So it's going to start promoting that excretion of sodium. Subsequently, it's going to draw out that excess of water leading to an increase in urine production. So the heart's ability to release AMP in response to those increases in blood volume is going to act as a protective mechanism by promoting the excretion of that sodium and water, effectively reducing our blood pressure and consequently decreasing um, blood volume, right? And then next we have our vascular impact. So what is happening with our vascular system? So ANP is also going to directly cause vasodilation, right? So that is that increase within that space inside of our vessels. It's going to cause that resistance to be reduced. So we're not gonna see as much resistance as we've seen before. And that's ultimately going to lead into the aiding of lowering our blood pressures. All right, everybody, that wraps up today's video on the overview of the heart. Hopefully this information was very helpful for you. But as always, follow me on my social media. I'm here. You can check out the blog for additional resources, Instagram, TikTok, and of course, nursechunkstore.com where there's additional resources available to you. As always, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye!